I've seen some people say that people with polycystic ovarian syndrome could conceivably be described as intersex in some cases. And while I don't necessarily agree with that statement outright, I understand where it's coming from and it does make a good degree of sense. So do you know what intersex means? Do you know the sort of general definition for intersex? I don't know the technical de definition there. Oh. But it's just that you, you don't fall into some of the old prescribed categories of biologically male or female. And that can have to do with your genitalia when you're born, but it can also be to do with other things yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean the un says intersex people are born with sex characteristics including genitals gonads and chromosome patterns that do not fit typical binary not uh, notions of male or female bodies right so it can be just your chromosomes as well it doesn't have to be oh, yeah. your genitalia like you could just oh, yeah, be yeah, born just with like yeah different chromosomes oh that absolutely yeah yeah so these so chromos loads of people can be intersex and they wouldn't know oh loads of people are intersex and they don't know yeah like, honestly a ton of people are intersex and they don't know a lot of people only find out they're <laughs> you're like mm -hmm. there's an episode of house about this yeah which i've only seen that episode of house because it was on in this house <laughs> yeah uh the other day when i was here Meta. uh yeah it was about a, a lady who had testicles and she didn't know mm. uh and she so was undescended yeah, yeah. 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 So there can be a ton of different sort of chromosomal makeups. Uh, you can have androgen insensitivity syndrome, which would mean you'd have sort of XY chromosomes and the SRY gene producing androgens, but your body just doesn't doesn't sort of I guess interact with them, react to them this, the, the sort of way that it normally would, meaning that you don't have typical male sex development, right? Uh, there's so many, there's so, so many different intersex conditions. There's so many different uh, routes to being classed as intersex. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get into all of them, but that's the sort of UN definition of intersex, that being born with sex characteristics um, that don't fit the typical male-female binary. But the UK government defines sex as uh, referring to the biological aspects of an individual as determined by their anatomy, which is produced by their chromosomes, hormones, and their interactions generally male or female, something that is assigned at birth. But very loosely, sex is generally sort of described as being these biological markers, right? Um, you know, chromosomes, uh, secondary sex character characteristics, primary sex characteristics, characteristics, and sort of hormone balances. And all of these come into, you know, the sort of idea of what sex is. And when these things don't align, that's when you can get, kind of be classed as intersex. Generally, it's chromosomal or anatomical. So that would be just the primary and secondary sex characteristics. Primary sex characteristics being sort of your, you know, your sex organs. Secondary being the ones generally that come about during puberty. So that'd be breasts, facial hair, all of that stuff, right? So you can understand here why people would say, okay, PCOS could be loosely described as an intersex condition because you are... You, like because of a this sort of natural way that your body is sort of uh, producing hormones, mm. you know whether it whether it's sort of atypical or not, because of the natural way your body's producing hormones, you are you are you are sort of um, you are sort of exhibiting uh, I guess non typical secondary sex characteristics, right? Mm -hmm. Which is quite interesting because it, it affects so many people, yeah. right? And it's also um, some of it. I'm like, I feel like I was prescribed things that actually should have just been prescribed to society. I was like, do you want to like talk right. to them? Don't talk to me. Yeah. I don't want. And I think the thing of like, okay, maybe it could be an intersex condition, but then is the prerequisite of somebody being fertile part of them being like a, a woman? Right. No. And like, is it like they're not that hairy? Like, how hairy am I allowed to be? <laughs> without do you know what i mean no, no, yeah, so exactly. some of it i'm like oh yeah maybe it's intersex but then i'm like maybe it's how we perceive women to be like hairless and fertile and and sh slippery and shiny this is the thing this is this is kind <laughs> of is my how point I would describe myself but this is this is very much my point that mm. like when you when you look at this and you take it you take it as a whole the idea of sex being a strict binary or a you know a, a binary with the other option of being intersex which we'll usually just ignore it just it kind of breaks down, right? Because it's quite clear that it's just a case of if you change some hormones that are already naturally produced in the body, you ch ch change the levels of them, mm. you will have you you have sort of different outcomes. And it's not it's not that strict binary that we're kind of taught throughout our entire lives. I don't know. I just find it kind of interesting the way that again, sort of uh, the binary of sort of sex that we've got influences how this is treated and how it's viewed. I mean, like you're saying there, a lot of these treatments could just be a case of, hey, society, mm -hmm. maybe don't make people who, you know, have more hair than you'd expect them to have, don't treat them badly. And maybe don't make fun of them for it. Maybe don't make them feel like they shouldn't have that because like, why not? There was a you know? boy at my school who called me pistachio because I had a mustache. 
That is <laughs> Which devastating. Which is so funny now, but like at the time, I was like, I'm never going to be loved because I have a mustache. But where did the pee then, come from? So it's undetectable by by teachers. Mm. Oh, so, <laughs> so it's not it's like, like he was calling me mustachio, right? But he was, but yeah. But it's interesting because now, like, I I'm still like insecure about the hair thing. But like my boyfriend Craig was just like, why are you weird about this? And now we like shave together in the nice. morning, so like, put on our little like thing oh, and like do the great. thing. But then I, I realized the only time that I've ever seen that in films was like at the, the beginning of Shrek 2 and like Fiona is literally an ogre <laughs> the only woman I've ever seen with hair on their face in media is Fiona in her ogre form well I make God. films so I'll do some PCOS Be- representation bitch, bitch sometime women, please but yeah it's interesting and it's also like not I kind of don't think I don't walk around the world being like I'm a woman with PCOS mm-hmm. like it's not like the worst thing of all of like the mm. ailments that all of my friendship group have I said that I, I feel like I've like won the jackpot <laughs> do you mm-hmm. know what I mean I'm like whoa <laughs> There are worse things, so I think it's something that like hasn't really affected my life past teenage years, really, because I'm not, I don't know, because I've learned to handle it. Yeah, that's an interesting thing about the intersex thing about you saying like some people say that this should be because ultimately that is you know like you say you've got to create categories in order to diagnose, in order to train, in order to roll systems out, but intersex is another category, right? It's like you had you had male female and you were like these categories don't fit everyone, so you create another category in the middle that's like, we'll put all, all these people who don't fit in these two in this one. And then, uh, but ultimately that's still a spectrum. There are people who will lie like lie right on the boundary between male and sex. And you may say that like people with PCOS, the argument could be that right now in the categories uh, of those, je- those sexes plus intersex, um, maybe PCOS are like, on that boundary between female and intersex, if that's the argument they're making, and they're sort of widening the box of the intersex box. But ultimately, that's still all categorical thinking, right? Yeah. Um, which is like, categories are great for ruling out systems and training people, but then you have to then train them, as we do talk all the time about where you get to like the next year of biology, and then they go, everything you learned last year was not true. Um, it was helpful, truth is, yeah. but here's what the truth is, and then they do that again and go, oh, that wasn't true. Like. I, I talk about this all the time about how I, I wish we could, even just for like two days out of the 250 a year that you're in school, um, you could do all your categories and then you could also be taught like, but also these categories aren't real things. They are helpful. Like they're, they're, they're helpful. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. and like we don't get that at all. I had to figure that out when I was like 25. That was like, oh my God, <laughs> they're not real things. Exactly. Ah, Especially studying science. Why did no one tell me that? Why did no? Yeah. And I said this to a guy who does like a lot of education stuff. He's like, if you did that, you'd have to overhaul the entire education system. I was like, because oh, like the children would revolt. Well, good, and we <laughs> should. Like- but I was like, but if it's not true, yeah. then like, then why would you- it's not just about it not being true. Because I think using general categories works. It's fine. Mm-hmm when it's useful. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes it becomes not useful and that's when you've got a bloody problem, right? Because, well, now we've got this unuseful thing that is harming people. And I, so look, I, I am in a Facebook group or I'm intermittently in a Facebook group where it's essentially TERFs versus, it's, it's TERFs versus TRAs. It's people who don't like trans people um, arguing with people that think that trans people are fine and you should probably just leave them alone for a little bit. Um, and I end up having a lot of conversations and one of the things I, I genuinely am interested in understanding is how do you, how do you, Define sex, though. Like, how does how do intersex people fit into your worldview? Okay, well, you don't want me to talk about intersex people. What about what about men that have you know cis men that have got gynecomastia, right? Where they they grow breast tissue. Mm. What about you know like okay, what about uh what about cis women that have polycystic ovaries and like what about all of these things? Like because if you're saying that it's it's strictly the biological stuff, well, okay, what elements of it? Primary and secondary sex characteristics. Secondary sex characteristics are basically changed by hormones, right? Mm. Primary ones can be ambiguous and your chromosomes don't necessarily cleanly like it's not Mm. a direct line from these chromosomes to this sort of uh, sort of uh, I guess anatomical presentation it is so much more complex than people let on and this sort of very categorical thinking just just makes it so much harder in so many ways and I mean I'm, I'm going to talk for a little bit longer I'm so sorry but like talking about species is something I often do to help people understand this because I, and I was talking to someone the other day about this, and they just they they did not seem to get it. What my point is is that if you look at species, they don't exist, right? Like, where does a chicken or like a, you know sort of proto chicken become a chicken, right? The, the definition that we've got for species is uh basically a population that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring, right? But like a chicken 
a, a proto chicken can probably breed with next generation, and that uh, chicken can then breed with the next generation of chickens, and keeps on going down the line through time. But at some point, like two of these individuals are not going to be able to breed to produce fertile offspring. And that doesn't just happen over time. That happens over area. Look up, um, mm. look up what is it? Uh, cir- circular sort of Klein species or like circular species. I can't remember the exact mm. name of it. But there's there's a system, there's a scenario wherein you've got sort of overlapping groups of species that can all uh, breed with each other, and they go around in a circle. And then the two adjacent ones can't breed with each other, but they can breed with all of the other adjacent ones. Weird. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's like a right? big, like giant Venn diagram of. Yeah of like quote unquote species where they're all fertile in some senses with things that are supposedly in the same species, but then they're not fertile with things that are supposedly in a different species, but that thing they're fertile with is in the same species as that third thing. Yeah, it's like what do you what do you assign as an irregularity, like a duck bill platypus, and what what do you assign as like oh actually the existence of this should make us reconsider everything we've known before rather than being like well that's just a weird like you've got to have something that proves the rule mm. um, I think you guys are forgetting though oh. it's high school biology oh true oh and you know my, what my bad you, you've really you've, forgive. A perfect this is a perfect <laughs> a perfect place to send a message to anyone who might be a turf or you know mm. uh, gender critical or thinks that you know uh, woman equals adult human female sex and gender are the same thing sex is mutual blah 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 all of that stuff um, okay cool so here is how your worldview is actually harming cis women you know the women that you say that you care the most about um do you not think that maybe uh, these strict categorizations of sex and gender, uh, this idea that uh, sex is absolutely binary and is absolutely based on chromosomes, is absolutely based on X, Y, Z, do you not think that's maybe harmful to people who have polycystic ovary, ovary syndrome, who have to go through, or who are expected to go through all of these treatments and who are treated as being, you know, less than if they don't go through certain treatments? All of them being purely, I guess, sort of, I mean, what's the word? Um, surface level. All of them being mm-hmm. aesthetic, right? You know, like these gender affirming things like, you know, oh, getting rid of facial hair where we don't think you have facial hair. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, maybe we should change your, try and change your body composition because it's not the, none of that like really matters for someone's health. We should be focusing on the more things that relate to their health. But instead we have, you know, young girls being told you need to lose weight. Which is not very, it's not a great thing to be saying to, you know, a kid. And you can see the root of all of this comes from just these strict sex categories and not allowing people to exist outside of the sort of expected presentations of them. I have a question. Go for it. Is PCOS an illness? Um, Or like, is it only an illness in that we see it as an illness? I think, okay, so what I would say is I think there are some signs of it that are not necessarily harmful. Um, but I would say that it generally could be described as an illness based on the aspect of diabetes and how that can insulin be. and yeah. pain. The insulin and pain. Yeah, we don't love that. It's like the DSM five, where like, um, uh, which is I made a joke about at the start of the, po- the start of the podcast, which is a different a different joke about the DSM five that we like to say. But um, the idea that like something's only a problem uh, if it is affecting your life. Mm. So like, but then the, the problem with that is if you've found out some really weird, complicated mental like like house of cards you've built to get around the problem, um, then you just don't get diagnosed. Yes, mm. because you've built a world around you that... It's like if you mask too well, yes. yeah, yeah. you don't get diagnosed with autism. You Such as lots of women and young girls. Yeah, I think that, again, it's, it's just stuff like there, there could be a world built for people with PCOS who then wouldn't feel like there's anything that wrong with them. And I also just feel like women who are in pain... Like, women... Like, a lot of women need to have periods. Mm. They're quite painful. Can't we just give them time off work? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the medication I took and, like, really strong pain medication I took for PCOS because I was still expected to turn up to work and to school. <laughs> and, like, if I was just, like, left alone with a hot water bottle yeah it wouldn't have been something that i'd felt like i'd need to take drugs for yeah we've said that like 50 percent of people don't have um symptoms of this right if you've got it you've you've got a greater than 50 percent chance of not exhibiting really any symptoms which means that like is it is it is it just a, a sort of expression of human variance right of of like sort of genetic i guess um variability in some cases it might be and in other cases it could it, it could be and then also could have um these specific issues you know the health issues that are attached to it of interest what does that mean when you when there are people 50% of people who don't have any symptoms what do they have? have they got cysts with no symptoms have they got they would have none of the other symptoms they would have the androgen sorry. I, th- I think it means they would have the androgen stuff so they've got and then... higher levels of hormones but it's not actually turned into anything it's not showing up yeah that's interesting so remember that like 
the symptoms that I've listed off are more than just the diagnostic criteria. So you could meet the diagnostic criteria um, and not necessarily have um, all of these other symptoms like oily, oily skin and acne, weight mm. gain, thinning hair and hair loss, all of those sort of things, right? Okay. So like if you were to look at your, uh, say, your ovaries and you had uh, lots of, of, of these specific kinds of cysts or you had the sort of um, irregular periods or if you had the higher androgen levels, you could be, you would fall into the diagnostic, you would like fit I into see. the diagnostic criteria, but you wouldn't necessarily need to have sort of apparent symptoms. Yes. Right. Mm. And I guess, again, what we're, what we've kind of been touching on here, what I say touching on, what we've been like very much saying here is that the way that we view people and how they should be very much affects how we deal with things medically and we medicalize things that might not need to be medicalized as heavily as they are and we take away people's choice based on silly things like expected sex and gender presentation and all of that nonsense i mean it's this is very much an interesting i guess syndrome to look at it's very much an interesting thing to look at if you want to consider how does society impact i guess medicine in general how does that impact how we view you know presentations of people because as we said as we said kind of up top it's sort of this intersection of all of these different things that we are just not really very good at dealing with in a sort of nuanced way but that is kind of it for the show the one last thing i want to mention is i said up the top that i'd mention um sort of trans men and uh, polycystic uh, ovary syndrome in in them and we used to think that they had a higher prevalence and then with more studies it seems that there isn't very much a higher prevalence. So it's not necessarily um, connected uh, too deeply to polycystic ovarian syndrome. I mean, we could do an entire episode on this because there is some really interesting stuff there. But yeah, like, I mean, it, it's it's not necessarily as easy to study as we might have thought because our, our ideas of how it affects people has just changed over time. Mm-hmm.